I always knew too much about food and that rests heavy on your conscious sometimes when you know like should I really be eating this cheeseburger fries and milkshake maybe <laughs> but maybe not <laughs> I was a very happy child. I was always around food and family, and it was fun, and I liked to do a lot of things. I don't like to be bored, ever. Describe what it was like growing up in the restaurant business. It was fun. I mean, it stunk because my parents weren't around all the time, but it was fun knowing that, you know, like I could come here all the time, and I learned what good food is. I started to to learn what others did not know. Yeah, it was definitely a struggle because it made me more aware of what I was eating. And, you know, kids, when they're, when you're a kid, you don't really want to be aware. I mean, kids eat mozzarella sticks and pizza all day and they're very happy. But I would never eat any of that stuff because I knew what was in it. I have this right here. <laughs> and it's a turkey and Swiss sandwich on whole wheat. One piece of Swiss cheese. Like, just one? Just one piece. I have almond butter, Justin's, with only two ingredients. Dry roasted almonds and palm fruit oil. Delicious. I have apples. I have this banana that started to ripen because it was in a brown paper bag. I have so much fruit. Um, I have watermelon, cantaloupe, pineapple, kiwi, and strawberries. And I also have a yogurt. So, I'm a very hungry lady. I eat many things. To pack my lunch the night before school, it usually takes like a half hour. I think about what I'm gonna do in the morning, like if I'm gonna eat at home or if I'm gonna end up eating at school, like bringing breakfast, because today I had to bring breakfast because I worked out before school and I showered here. So, I base what I eat for breakfast, and then, you know, what I eat for breakfast, like today for breakfast. I had um, a cup of oatmeal squares, which is a cereal, and banana protein muffins, and both of those are carbs with a ton of fiber in them. So then for lunch, I had, um, I'm having more of a protein with a lighter carb. This bread is only, two slices of this bread equals one slice of regular bread. It's like ultra thin. So then I have a protein for lunch and all of my sugars for lunch and my fruit. I have a food journal. It's an app and it comes on iPhone and it's called My Nut Diary. When you click on it, you have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And like I know what I'm going to eat all day today, so I already logged all that in. So I like this app. It's worked for me so far. Do you do this every day? If I feel interested in knowing what I eat. Yeah. Because if I'm going to eat garbage all day, I don't want to see that. <laughs> and then in high school, you know, I started playing tennis and swimming. And that's when I started yoga, too. So I was really active. And, you know, to be that active, you have to nourish your body appropriately. I came to yoga looking for... I originally just came looking for a fun new activity to do because I was always like interested in what I could do to stay healthy. You know, going to the gym sometimes gets a little bit boring. And I was always swimming, so I just wanted something different. And I never tried yoga before. And I guess what attracted to me, me to hot yoga was that it had a really high caloric burn. And I thought that that was kind of interesting and unique. So I originally just went out of curiosity. Well, it started with just, um, you know, something I did for fun every once in a while. Like every couple weeks or maybe like twice a month with my friend we would go. Because it was out of the way, I didn't have my license yet. And then, you know, as I got older I started to really love it in a different sort of way. Like it helped calm, it helped calm me down and ease a lot of worries that I had. It helped me feel better about myself. And as I got older I feel like I was more and more influenced by the media and I feel like going to the gym made me almost down on myself but going to yoga lifted my spirits 
I think going to the gym is really intimidating. It doesn't matter if you're going to, you know, like a really high-end gym or if you're just going to Planet Fitness where they're not supposed to intimidate you. I feel like there's always that intimidation. But I made myself go for a long time to stay fit and I think that it wasn't until, you know, maybe a year ago that I realized I didn't have to do that anymore. I didn't have to go to the gym to be healthy. Well, because I was around food so much, it made me want to know more about food. And, you know, I started small with just looking up what I usually ate every day and what that consisted of. And then I started doing it for everything, and then people in school would ask me to make them little meal plans. And I just really loved knowing and understanding what food is behind just, like, taste and for energy. And that's, I think, when I decided that I wanted to go to school for nutrition. You know, like, I expected to come to the nutrition program and be bombarded by these super fit, super healthy, intimidating people, but they're really just all normal people. Here, give me that stuff. I love this lash. I love it a lot more than our social cultural lab last semester, our basic foods lab last semester, because um, most of that was, like, you know, stuff that we eat in America, but this lab is stuff that we eat all over the world. That's really interesting. So I've never tried a lot of these things. I love cooking because then I get to eat it. If I was cooking for someone else, I don't think I would enjoy it so much because I can't eat it. How is it? Really, really good. You should try some. Okay, well, Project HEAL, first of all, it's, um, it's a nonprofit organization. We raise money for men and women that are fighting eating disorders because treatment is not covered by insurance, and it's about $30,000 a month. And Project HEAL started as Project HEAL Scranton, but a few girls from Marywood that had it are graduating, so they passed it down to myself and my friend Johanna, and we've taken it over and made it Project HEAL Marywood. Okay. So the meetings are, we usually have them once a week, and once we get there, we usually start off by, you know, Johanna usually makes up some sort of activity like, tell the person to your left something that you like about them, which is so nice, because, you know, people have such a different understanding of you than you have of yourself, like they can see something in you that's positive that you've never seen before. Or, you know, we talk about something positive that happened in our day, which is great because sometimes it's just that one little positive thing that could change your mind. I met oh, many girls this semester that are nutrition majors, both, you know, in my grade, both a freshman and upperclassmen that have eating disorders or are in recovery. So, I mean, after hearing their stories, it really touched my heart. And also, just like I said, the struggles that I've had throughout high school and college trying to you know, stay healthy. It's sometimes overwhelming and I feel as though I could really connect with an eating disorder, someone with an eating disorder, because although I haven't had as severe as a struggle of, as they have, I understand what it feels like to be overwhelmed by food. It puts pressure on students to know and understand that, you know, in the time that we live in, people don't look at an overweight person and think of all the different things that might be wrong with them other than just eating too much. Being a an overweight dietitian, I don't think that that would go well. <laughs> I feel like people wouldn't come to you for advice and as sad as that is, I feel like it's the truth. So I feel a certain pressure to look a certain way and uphold a certain level of health in order to become successful in my career, which that's really stressful for me. Especially because looking at our department, there really aren't any overweight dietitians in our apartment either, department either. And that kind of worries me a little bit because, you know, that stresses me out looking into the future, saying, you know, like, what if, what if I have a health problem that would, you know, cause me to be a little bit overweight? Or what if I just can't keep up with being healthy and studying and learning to become a dietitian, will that affect my career?